takes a lot to kind of move a marimba band around. I thought, well, since we're going to drag these over to the middle school here and all set up, it'd be nice to just play uh, some more music. And what I I, I, I brought with me my uh, some members, a member of Boca Marimba, and my husband and I are ex-members of Boca Marimba, and my daughter Maya, who's grown up with this music. And what we'd like to do is show you what you can play, uh, demo just short pieces of other songs, and just show you what you can do with this music when you stick with it for years and years and years, um, and, uh, and, and play more complicated stuff that's more deeply rooted in the traditional music of Zimbabwe, which is quite different than the kind of music that we're used to. It's very circular, it's very mystical. Um, some of it. So we'd like to demo some of that. So I'd like to um, introduce uh, Eric again. He's going to play, and Maya, my daughter, and my husband Fred. And we're going to play a song for you called Amakoko. And I can't really pronounce it correctly because I don't know how to do that South African Joseph language thing. Can anybody do that? The quick language? So it's really Amakoko. I can't do it. So it means in the Loji tribe, Robbing. This song is written by one of my teachers, Alcorn Estonia, to capture that rich, dead sound of all the crickets and all the insects and all the frogs just throb away at night and make their own beautiful music.
the 20th century by a person who was still alive in the last year. Um, this next song is Nobody Knows Where It Came From. It was in Shona culture, you pass everything you know down orally. They had no written alphabet until the British imposed the English alphabet upon them. Everything, they have amazing memories because nothing was written down. Everything that you learned, you learned by somebody telling you, and you just remembered it. So these songs were passed on generation after generation, and at some point, nobody really remembers where it came from, but we do know that it's about 2,000 years old, and it's called Vangiza. And Vangiza means enlightenment. And this is a song that you play in a religious ceremony to put yourself in a state of mind that you can commune with your deceased ancestors and they can help guide you in any problems that you have. So this, this is a, a deep song and we're just going to play a little... Normally this song would go on all night while you were put into a trance. So we're not going to do that. We're going to put you in a little trance. Underneath the instrument, instead of PVC pipe, which is what the other ones are 
this year. We got PVC pipes in the board. So I was just trying to copy that shape of fiberglass, and uh, that's how it came out. It also lights up. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> you know those little things they put in kids' sneakers when they walk on and they light up? Well, he ordered a bunch of them from China, just that little component, and decided to circuit that every key is wired to the tube so that when you strike it, it lights up. It just makes it more fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to play one more song. And this song is called Gandanga. And Gandanga is a song from the, the year that pretty much between all through the 60s and most of the 70s of the 20th century, the 1960s and 1970s, there was a chimaranga going on, and that means struggle in Zimbabwe. And what was happening is the Shona people and the Dibeli people had decided that they basically wanted their country back and uh, from the British, who had colonized it. We talked about that in the song Chamanuka. And they basically, they had a civil war, lasted about 10 or 15 years. It was very bad and a lot of people died. But they won, and they got to rename their country Zimbabwe after the great ruins, these stone ruins um, there in Zimbabwe. There was an ancient civilization there called Zimbabwe. So they renamed the country after the, you know, their ancestors, and there was lots of celebrations. But during that time of struggle, there were a lot of songs about the war, and this is one of them. And what we're, it, we don't have time to sing it, but the words are saying to the soldiers, there was guerrilla warfare. You guys know what guerrilla warfare is? Um, a lot of times the British would go into a village that they knew that there were freedom fighters in the village sort of hiding out, pretending to be villagers. They would go to the next village and poison all the crops, biological warfare, and then flush out the fighters from the first village, knowing that they would go to the next village, and the villagers would feed them, house them, hide them, care for them, um, to, and they would just go village to village. So at some point, and if the villagers told their fellow countrymen that the crops had been poisoned, then the British would just kill them. So what they did is they sang about it in these cute little songs that nobody would suspect. And the message is saying, don't eat the sp spinach, don't eat the okra. It's bitter. It'll make you throw up. Um, don't eat it. Soldiers don't eat okra. And it was such a nice little tune that the British had no idea that through song, they were warning their fellow Real fighters, not to eat. It's really not a bit, a lot of people say, oh, you're teaching us a song about don't eat your vegetables. It's not really that. <laughs> it's, it's uh, oh, don't eat your vegetables if they've been poisoned. Yeah. Uh, oh, you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I, I have a Zimbabwean friend that lived through this time, and she said they would just come in and throw poison over everything that could be eaten. Don't eat anything that's been grown in the ground um, that we might pick today and be forced to serve to you. Don't eat it because it's poison. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. I think I start this song. <laughs> 